Guess who's back, folks? The Michigan Recruiting Insider. A little bit of a hiatus, uh, but we are back, recalibrated, now that we have an idea with the recruiting class kind of getting to a point where it was a, at a bit of a standstill, and then it lost some members. Now we got an idea of where they're going to go, and we're also getting a better idea and a better feel for what things look like on the NIL side of things for Michigan. So that's going to be a huge focus uh, as we get into uh, upcoming episodes here on the Michigan Recruiting Insider. Such a big deal in recruiting these days, as we were talking about in game planning, the direction with the Recruiting Insider. He said we need to focus more on NIL moving forward, and we're definitely going to do that. We're also going to keep bringing you the up-to-date news. The visitors haven't been that many. That's another reason why hasn't been a lot of talk. That's going to ramp up here in the coming weeks heading into Ohio State. And then, of course, flip candidates. That is a big deal right now. And that's what today's episode is going to be about. Joining me, my esteemed colleagues over from the MichiganInsider.com, my good friends, starting off first with Mr. Bryce Marriage. Bryce, how are you? A solid, solid. It's been, it's been a minute. Um, you know, I just want to clear up something real quick. There was a mystery recruit that was at Michigan. I hate to break the news, but I'm going to break and I'm going to say who it was. It was Taylor Swift. <laughs> Taylor Swift made the game. So if you didn't see her, she was there. She was looking for me. But I said, uh, I got to work. Like quick, I said, quick, I got to work. Quick private jet over to be with Travis Kelsey. Yeah, Kelsen. I know. That's how that works. That kind of hurt me a little, but you know, that's what it is. So. Steve Lorenz is back. Where's Boop, man? She actually just got, she was actually literally just eating <laughs> up here. I got dog down here bugging the hell out of me. Um, yeah, no, a little bit of a hiatus because there literally has been nothing going on on the recruiting trail. Couple decommits, like you said, Sam, but otherwise, I mean, you talk about bare bone. I mean, we're talking not even host, can't even host visitors. You know, it's like, uh, so probably, I think, prudent of us to not waste anybody's time just talking in circles and talking about a bunch of nothing. So, uh, but yeah, no, things should be heating up here. Yeah, moving well, forward that, for sure. And we, we would have been twiddling our thumbs and then we would have been listening to people just panic. <laughs> That's that also. Right. So yeah. That's what the, the last month, month and a half worth of episodes would have been. But now there's a, a real focus. Recruiting uh, direction is sort of shaping up visitors coming on campus. And then these flip candidates, as you see schools struggle, as you see, for instance, Michigan State, which we're going to focus on a bit today, fire their coach. It opens some doors. Doors that were once closed are now open again. So Let's just start off first, uh, though, Bryce, bringing to the fore some update. And, and, and before we start, I also got to get the uh, the pleasantries out the way. Folks, if you like these podcasts, this podcast specifically, The Recruiting Insider, tell all your friends about it. They can find it wherever they get their podcast. That's Google. That's Spotify. That's iTunes. You name it. If they search for The Michigan Insider, they will find this podcast also on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get a notification every time we do another video. Like the channel as well. That's how we keep going and growing. And a special shout out to our new sponsor here on the Recruiting Insider, our friends at Golden Limo. If you ride through town and you're watching the buses that bring Michigan's team in, all those black buses kind of pulling up to the stadium, that's Golden Limo, right? So, And they were also the ones, Golden Limo, by the way, when I followed the team to, to, uh, to Paris and to Rome. Golden handled the transport, not only getting my family to the airport, but when we landed in Rome and Paris, Golden was there to pick us up. That's different. That's worldwide. That's world class. And you got it right here in Ann Arbor. Michigan football, basketball, Michigan athletics rides on Golden. You should as well. You can find them at GoldenLimo.com. With that, Bryce, let's talk about the uh, the recent visitors to campus. And there haven't been a whole lot of them, but who are some of the noteworthy guys that made it to campus recently? Yeah, so just like I was going to say, two-week hiatus. Um, they self-imposed a two-week ban on recruiting visitors. They had some guys up the previous weekend for Bowling Green, but we're going to talk about, you know, Rutgers. They had a couple commits. Blake Frazier was up there. Um, he's been playing left tackle. He's been doing really good. He joked with me. He's like, hey, man, I let up one sack this season. He's like, that's not going to happen. But he's been really working on his – uh, run game and his technique and he looks bigger and stronger so that was good to see Cole Sullivan a guy that people need to know he's a yeah, linebacker man. man you talk about a guy that's having a 
dominant senior season. I think he's a guy also, six foot three, 210 pounds, that's going to rise up in the rankings. I know other networks look at him as a four star prospect. I personally look at him as a four star. We have him as a high three. But again, man, you just watch his film, you see how instinctual, how much he flies to the ball. He's got long arms. He's super athletic. He's he plays punter. He does everything for his. He even does slot for his high school team. He's a special kid. He was up for the second weekend in a row as well. And then Jake Ronera, he's a off the lineman, also committed from the Sunshine State. He's actually playing center this senior season in preparations for Michigan because Sharon Moore and Co. have basically told him in the five man off the line class. We want you to be the middle piece of our offensive line, the center of our class. And so he's transitioned from left tackle his junior season to center his senior season. He said the transition has been phenomenal. It's, you know, he's had some bumps here and there, and he's kind of taken some time to pick things up. But overall, it's been a smooth transition. And a guy that I think, too, more, you know, he's one of the top shot putters in the state of Florida. He's got great measurables at six foot four, 290. A guy that I'm super high on as well. So those three commits came in terms of uncommitted guys. And I'll just do a quick wrap up of the four. You had the two guys from Detroit King. You had Xavier Newsom, six foot five, 220. He's a 2025 edge rusher. He's been up there, I want to say a couple times. And He's Michigan likes him at edge rusher. I know he can play tight end. He can play multiple positions. They nick they nickname him the tree because he's so lean and so thin. But you look at him, you're like, man, this is a guy that if Ben Herbert gets to work with, he can easily put on 25 pounds and he's gonna be able to fly around the ball. And then the guy opposite of him for Detroit King on the other side of the defensive line, Willie Fletcher, who they really like as well. Um, he's a edge rusher. I think he's around six foot five. He might be around again that same 200, 220 range. And he's a guy, both of them have offers from Michigan. I know Michigan's monitoring them both. I don't know how high Michigan has them, both of them right on their board, but they're in state guys. They're taking, you know, they're keeping a close eye on them and they keep visiting. You know, I know they're super interested and they really like Michigan. The other two guys were out of state guys that were, I'm going to speak on Weston Port from San Juan Hills, Southern California. Four star off a four star linebacker um in the 2025 class. He's been up to Michigan a couple times, but this one is notable because again, it's unofficial, came up on his own dime and he talked about kind of the relationship he has with CP Chris Partridge. He really enjoyed his time talking to him and he really connected with the commits, you know, when I'm watching him pregame, you could see he was connecting with Cole Sullivan Jake, Blake, all those guys. And he kind of seemed like he was really fitting in. And he talked about it. He, I, he loved his time. And Michigan right now is in a really good spot for him. And just last guy from Green Bay, Wisconsin, is a 2025 four-star tight end, James Flanagan. His dad. So his dad played at Notre Dame. His name's Jim Flanagan. Went on to play for the Bears. And so he's the Notre Dame legacy, mm-hmm. right? And you would think, you would think, and Notre Dame is recruiting him. You would think, Sam, and I, I well, get it. We were for Notre Dame now, or right, right. Is it just Lloyd who has a crystal ball in for Notre Dame? Just right. Lloyd. But if you had to pick a game this past weekend to go to Notre Dame, Ohio State, or Michigan Rutgers, what would you probably pick? You know, I picked Notre Dame, Ohio State. He picked Michigan Rutgers, and so for me, that was this notable that he picked that game. Grant Newsom, the tight ends coach in Michigan, he's done a phenomenal job recruiting him and his family. And Michigan, I think, despite being a Notre Dame legacy, and Steve might be able to speak a little more on this recruitment, I think Michigan has a really good shot there to possibly land him. I know, you know, a lot of people, again, think he's a Notre Dame legacy. He's probably going to pick the Fighting Irish. He goes to a school named Notre, Notre Dame, Dame Academy. <laughs> so you just assume all the cards lining up for Notre Dame, but that doesn't seem like to be all the intel pointing towards them. Um, Steve, what do you know more about James and that recruitment? 
Yeah, I think Wisconsin's actually Michigan's biggest competition right now as things stand, which was kind of a surprise to me, obviously. Um, not, not only is his dad an Irish legacy, and he goes to a school called – his last name is Flanagan. Um, I mean, that's another reason <laughs> – why you think a kid like – I think I actually think Notre Dame has a kid last name Flanagan playing tight end for them right now, Cooper Flanagan out of Concord de la Salle. So, yeah, no, a lot of reasons why you'd think Notre Dame would be in pole position, but uh, I believe mom and sister went to Wisconsin. He's from the Green Bay area. Uh, he's I think he grew up a Wisconsin fan actually. So uh, Wisconsin might be the primary competition there, uh, at least right now. And, again, not writing off Notre Dame – at all. I mean, we know how much Notre Dame uses the tight end. Uh, we know how successful they've been recruiting tight end prospects over however many. I mean, you know, Michigan and Notre Dame seem to go after the same guys at tight end almost every year. So big time prospect. I, I'd argue, yeah, Flanagan was also, I want to say, was Grant Newsom's first stop during the winter evaluation period when the coaches first hit the road. So another indicator, A, they're very high on him, and B, they must feel like they have a legitimate chance there. You don't waste your first trip of the of the process, especially to a place where there probably aren't really any other prospects you're going to be looking for. You know, I mean, no offense to Green Bay, Wisconsin, but I don't think it's a little bit different than Florida, Georgia, Alabama, those areas of the country. So, yeah, no, I think I, you know I would probably throw Notre Dame in there in the top three if I had to guess. You know, it'd be Michigan, Wisconsin, Notre Dame. Uh, you know, and I'm assuming Michigan obviously going to be there until the end. Uh, I know Michigan really is going to go all out for their top of the board guys in 25. I mean, not that they wouldn't anyway, but they really feel good about the two they have in 2024 with Hogan Hanson and Brady Priestcorn. I, I really don't think you're going to see Michigan waste a lot of energy recruiting players that they're not a hundred percent sure about in, in 25. I think they feel like they're p- recruiting from a Position of luxury to an extent. I mean, you always want to get a couple good tight ends, but yeah, I mean, like that. That's why they feel like they can aggressively go after, you know, yeah, a Notre Dame legacy last name Flanagan uh, as as maybe their top guy. So definitely a name we'll be talking about again. Yeah, it certainly didn't do didn't do itself any favors. Uh, Notre Dame, the coaching staff, blowing that game the way they blew it down the stretch. And here's the the, the more surprising than the fact that they had two. Uh, straight plays with 10 men on the field. They had the same error a couple of weeks ago. I just saw, I re- just read that this morning. Yeah. yeah. How, do, how yeah. do you like, you think the, wouldn't the players even count? Like, yeah, see, hey, we only got 10 guys. Like, well, now, know. now Marcus Freeman said, you know, well, we had, now we have a, a, you know, signal in place that if we got 10 men on the field and yeah. we make it around. I just, <laughs> That's the uh, signal. I just, yeah. I, like, yeah. Why, why you need to have a signal for that? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Nick, why even why even admit that you have a signal for it? Just say, you know what? It's it it we, we it's been an issue. It's totally taken care of. It's never gonna happen again. Not we came up with a plan, guys. Here's what it is. You know, it's like it's just <laughs> oh, having man. enough guys on the field. Like yeah, yeah. you hey, know, look, they've been fumbling that rock uh since it happened. Because after the right after the game, he said, Hey, we we can't afford a penalty there, even though the ball's at the one yard line. And so whether they whether you get a penalty that moves it half the distance or get a penalty that gives them an extra play, at least you live to fight another day. Uh, if they get this, the game's over. <laughs> like this seems simple. So you would think that recruits start to see things like that. It's like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. But I want to go back to you talked about coach just briefly, because it felt like and it still feels like people are sleeping on Cole Sullivan, how good he is. It, early in the equation, it kind of made sense because I think people were kind of looking at Anthony Specker, right? Because I, I don't know if you guys – I think early in the rankings, he was ahead of Cole, wasn't he? Wasn't he ranked higher initially? Mm, and I think yeah, kinda, I think he was. I kind of overshadowed Cole at the beginning. But Cole Sullivan's a better player. He's longer. He's faster. He's more athletic. And that's no – that's no slight at all to uh, to Anthony Specka. Like he he's a good player, and I think he's gonna be a good player for Penn State. But Michigan got the guy. They got the guy. Uh, like th- he could not only could he be a, a linebacker, which I think he will be. But if they wanted him to be an edge, Chase Winovich style, I think he has the frame to do that too. So, I mean, I think he the, the versatility that he brings. 
he's also a super smart guy as well. Like I he he's an underrated kid. And I feel like as the season goes on, and you talked about what kind of season he's having, Bryce, I think the word is going to get out. I think the, the rankings are going to start to reflect that. And even if they don't, I think Michigan knows they have a guy. And then when you talk about Xavier Newsom, you know, that's one of those guys that you feel like, you know, is he a tight end? Is he a defensive? I don't know. I know he's a big Michigan fan. We, we interviewed him live for one of the uh, seven on seven previews. Right. This and it was a very neutral preview. It wasn't a a Michigan insider production. It was to represent sound mind, somebody bringing all their guys on. This dude came on in Michigan gear, <laughs> like making no the, had no qualms about where his leanings are. You like his frame, and that's another guy. I just use the ver- word versatility with with Cole Sullivan. I think Xavier Newsom is another guy who brings you some of that versatility, even if. Even if you didn't think he was long-term a defensive end or a defensive lineman, he could be a hell of a tight end. I remember talking to Allen about him uh, in the summer. He said there were some scouts out there that thought he might be the top tight end in the region and certainly one of the top tight ends in the country. So a couple of guys to to maybe be a little more excited about than, than we've seen people be, whether it be in the 25 class or the 24 class when we talk about Cole Sullivan. But let's Let's talk about flips, fellas. Let's talk about flip candidates. The firing of Mel Tucker was made official today. With that, the the not only does the clock start for guys on the roster who want to enter the portal, but you would think that it, it now it becomes official for the guys in the recruiting class that are like, you know what, I'm kind of waiting to see what happens. That was one of the things that Nick Marsh said, for instance. As a bunch of schools reached out to him and he says, you know, I'm committed to Michigan State. I want to wait to see what happens with Mel Tucker. Well, now it's official. I think this is a, this is going to be a, a, maybe the, the sign of the exodus beginning. And that began uh, with Reggie Powers, who I think he just de- decommitted today, didn't he? Yesterday he decommitted last night mm-hmm. um, out of – is it Centerville? Is he out of Centerville, Ohio? Centerville. Yeah. Right? Yep. Safety, four-star, um, a prospect – Notable does not yet have the Michigan offer. My opinion is if Michigan does offer, I feel like that is a decent indication that they feel like they might have the inside track on that one. Uh, I know, I believe Oklahoma has been involved. I think uh, Alan mentioned UCLA and his write-up yesterday after the decommitment. So he has no shortage of programs that are after him. But we do know safety is a spot where I think Michigan has quietly still been looking for another guy, right? I mean, Zaquan Patterson was sort of a hybrid, sort of safety corner type guy committed to Miami. Uh, Powers probably much more of just a a classic like safety prospect. But, I mean, he's a guy I thought maybe should have gotten the offer first time around. Uh, Ohio State did offer uh, the first time around. Uh, He actually does have an Ohio State offer. Not sure if the Buckeyes are still pursuing there or not. But either way, it's my opinion that if Michigan does offer, that I think they feel like they would have a very legitimate chance for the technically not a flip at this point, but kind of. I mean, he'd still be committed to Michigan State if it wasn't for uh, everything that's gone on there. So definitely a name for sure to keep an eye on, and, and we'll probably be talking more about. So Nick Marsh out of River Rouge, a uh, wide receiver, a guy that Michigan was on very in the very early going. I remember hearing from his coach at the time when he first started, Corey Parker, who's now an assistant at Toledo, said, I got a guy coming up, right? And if he's telling me that, you know, he's telling the schools that. So Michigan was on him as early as Michigan State, watching him at different camps. You guys remember we were up at um, Ferris at that at that summer camp, and they were watching him very, very intently. Then we get to not this past summer, but the summer prior. And we, we know that Michigan had uh, a few receivers on campus. They worked them out. They watched them. And it was at that point that the – you know, I, I felt like the they started to be passing. They were on diverging paths. It's all on both sides. Michigan uh, with regard to Nick Marsh and Nick Marsh uh, with regard to Michigan. He started kind of looking harder elsewhere, and so did they. In that time, though, uh, I think Nick Marsh has gotten better. Um, you know, he's always a, a, a long athlete, a high point guy. I think he's faster. I think he's quicker. Talked about this before. Uh, I think Michigan State was really excited 
feeling like they had uncovered a, a guy that maybe some were, were sleeping on a little bit. Well, now the door opens back up for, for Michigan to look at him again. And you see, I was at the Wayne State game. They did. He had the, um, there was a kickoff that he returned for a touchdown. And, you know, it, it, it kind of helped swing the pendulum of the game because it felt like Belleville was about to take over. And then you see him running away from the defense. It's like, man, I don't think he could have done that a year ago. Right. And then we saw him at, he was playing Wildcat. He was making moves in the open field. You see him shake a guy. He always seemed to be an angular guy that wasn't going to make a guy miss. And now he's doing that a little more. I don't want to make him out. Look, I, I'm not trying to blow him up to be this five star dude, but I, I do think that he has more upside than maybe uh, was, at least from Michigan's perspective, than maybe they initially thought. So this opens the door to kind of see, to kind of feel it out, to see if the, if the interest is mutual because one thing Bryce Steve, Bryce and Steven in Michigan hasn't gotten in the last couple of classes is size. They've gotten playmaking ability, you know, open field ability. They've gotten some speed, but the six two six three guy, you know, they they haven't gotten a lot of that. Channing Goodwin gives them some of that, but you can see that the class has a certain profile or the the room has a certain profile in terms of size, and they need a bigger receiver in the mix. So this is a guy that I think they're looking at. He's one of the one of the guys on the radar. I wouldn't say that he's like, you know, anything's imminent there, but I definitely think they've kind of kept their iron in the fire, at least contact wise, Ron Bellamy guys. I mean, if we look, yeah, like you said, Sam, the guys that they have been looking at to fill out the class at receiver have all been similar in that physical build, right? And on top of that, I think a lot of their top guys early on in the next cycle are longer, bigger bigger bodies, right? So, I mean, yeah, like you said, they've kind of filled the, the room out with a not even not necessarily a similar style of actual receiver, but size-wise, there's, yeah, there's definitely uh, a limit or there's, you know, it's a limited ceiling height-wise uh, as to the guys that they have on their current roster. So, uh, I'm with you guys. I think Marsh has definitely improved. Yeah, I have questions whether or not he's actually that interested in Michigan himself. And then, like you said, Sam, if, if Michigan, if he's still – of the guys we're going to talk about at receiver, you know, is he like that top guy on their end either? But proximity, uh, knowledge, just Michigan's been known about this kid forever. I got to assume. I mean, we'll see. He's been very – he and I think it's – is it his mom? Very wow. outspoken in favor of Michigan State. Does he actually follow through and decommit? I just – Michigan State feels toxic right now. I just can't imagine, I can't imagine. A, a prospect of his caliber wanting to stick on board. We'll see. But – um you know, either way, schools are already kind of circling, you know, and, and it's just hard to imagine a kid like him sticking around for them. Yeah, you know what I think it boils down to? You just hit on a, a really good point that I think is really going to determine if this recruitment picks up. You know, Michigan isn't going to go on him if, if they feel like he's like the, the interest isn't totally because you don't want to go on a guy and then have him spurn you and go someplace else. Like they aren't going to be a footnote in his recruitment. And I imagine he feels the same way. Like I'm not going to show a whole lot of interest in in Michigan unless I feel like like I'm a guy. Like I'm a guy. So, you know, it, it, what I think is going to boil down to is do the overtures turn into something serious? Like, does he come on campus for a visit? Now it's serious, right? If he comes on campus for a visit. Now, the first things first, he has to decommit. In the meantime, in the meantime, Steve, you hit on a great point. There are guys that they're further along with in terms of flip candidates and, and contact and the ongoing conversation. We'll get to some of them coming up, but I want to stick with, with Michigan State for a, a moment more because another thing to watch with the Spartans, we kind of talked about this last week on the Drop and Dime show. I put it to, to Devin Gardner and Daniel Horton, two guys who were big-time recruits, five-star guys, right? And I said, fella, and, but they were also on, in programs that were kind of in flux. So something happens, and – the coach gets fired, and you got an opportunity to pres not just go someplace else, but pre preserve your eligibility at the same time. Would you do it? And they both said, now nah, they would see. Let's see who else leaves, and I don't quit on my team. But it doesn't matter who else leaves Michigan State right now. God, they are terrible, and it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. So I don't even think it's selfish to look at your situation and say, hey, I could maintain my year of eligibility, 
because I didn't redshirt and go someplace else? Dude, I'm going to do that. So we looked at the injury list last last week, and it was bloated because it was it was game three. You can play four games. You can play four games and maintain your redshirt. So now they play four games. So watching that injury list this week is going to be really, really interesting because there were some guys in that last class, for instance, that if they hit, if they decide they want to jump, you went to see by Job, didn't you, Bryce? Like if by Job, it's by Job, right? If by Job hit the portal, I'm not saying I've heard anything to suggest that he's about to, but if he did, man, that'd be a guy to Michigan going in a heartbeat, I think, Bryce. Absolutely. I know when I went to see him, his head coach and even him preached to me that Michigan was one of the schools they liked the most. And one of the reasons is he moved, you know, he came to the States. And one of the guys he mentioned to me was David Ojabo. And that comparison of how, you know, they made that transition, how Michigan molded a guy, you know, international student just like him into edge rusher that went on to play in the NFL, which he's trying to do. That's the ultimate goal. You know, and the other thing, too, with that was I, I one of the big reasons he, I felt like, went to Michigan State was Brandon Jordan, who then left for the Seattle Seahawks yep. last season. So that yep. was already kind of like, that was already like that Jenga stack. You already pulled one out, and you're like, it's shaky, but it's still standing. And then you see Mel Tucker now fire, and it's like, well, is it all going to fall? And I think that's a guy where, I mean, he had immense talent when I went to go see him. And this is a guy that has stupid, stupid athletic traits. And he's someone I think even the scouts were like, yes, he doesn't play the greatest competition where he was in Oklahoma, but you can't teach his physical traits and what he brings to the table. And again, he's the type of kid that you could easily mold, easily mold because he had the perfect frame super great athleticism extremely strong length i mean he had everything intangibles you're looking for Mm -hmm. and so i think that's why michigan was looking at it because if you look at how michigan recruits the edge position they're looking for a certain type of body type and by job is definitely what they what fits the mold for them so i think if his name happened to pop up in this what 30 30 day window i think sam they get since Mel Tucker's now officially fired. That's someone they might inquire on. Hey, man. You know, I mean, there are no friends in this. There are no friends no. in this. Uh, no. And, and you, you're not tampering. I haven't even heard it, but this is what you look for. So look at that injury list this week. Look at that injury list in the coming weeks. What guys are on it? It was bloated last week, I felt like. Do we see more guys on yeah. the Michigan State injury list this week? And if you do, that's going to be a telltale sign. Not just the, the the portal entries, which you're going to be watching as well. And then look at the guys that Michigan was on. So by Job, uh, the Andrew DePape kid, if he were to hit, right? These are these are the kind of <clears throat> things. If, so we're talking about it, not knowing if it's going to happen. We aren't the only ones, <laughs> right? You got to know that that Michigan schools across the country are looking at Michigan State's roster, kind of waiting, like. Mm. I wonder if that guy. I wonder if that guy's gonna pop back up. That's how it works, man. You got it's, you got to be ready to pounce. Yeah, man, it's here's crazy. The here's the other thing: a guy who hits the portal now, and especially a guy who hits the portal and decides, "Look, I'm done. I'm not playing anymore this season." They can't take your scholarship. They you got the scholarship for the remainder of the fall. You can take visits. You can take visits. Like, dude, man, that's something to watch. That's a, a compelling storyline to watch. So. We will, and we'll be keeping you up to speed on it. Another the- another name on their roster that I would watch for, just potentially, again, yeah, no tampering here. We have no idea what's going on, is actually is uh, Brennan Parachek, the tight end, out of Dexter. Mm-hmm. Michigan had thoughts of making mm-hmm. a late run there at the end of last cycle. I think the question with him was, is he a tight end, or does he project offensive line? I think he's a pretty big kid for a tight end, but we know Michigan wants to continue to build that room up. Uh, he's he another name. Late? Didn't he visit late? He, so I, I think he may have showed up on campus sometime very late yeah. in the process. And I get the impression if Michigan had really pushed there that they could have potentially made the flip there. So 
He's a name, you know, and teammates with Cole Cabana, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. that that's another name on their current roster. Yeah, if he if guys like that decide to leave, definitely as far as Michigan is concerned, are those are names I would keep an eye on for sure. All right, so so Steve, we'll on the other side here kind of get into and we'll kind of get into uh talking about the other guys that we know uh, at the receiver position, for instance, who things seem further down the line with than say Nick Marsh, which you know it's just feelers, you know, they maintain contact. How you doing? Good opener to the sea. Heard about your opener, you know, great game against Belleville, that kind of thing, right? Has it progressed? We'll see. It has progressed farther with others but i mentioned earlier that our sponsor for this show golden limo you can find at goldenlimo.com uh the owner of golden limo sean duvall you talk about big michigan fans there are few bigger than him so imagine imagine that guy uh starting a company and being able to basically bust the the michigan athletic department around which is what he did but for the opener he actually had me. He actually had me as a uh, as one on Gold Limo. He he took me, or I had one of his vehicles take me to the game, and you know picked me up at home. Uh, you know, got me through to all the traffic. I had to get to the pregame show, but that's not to me the best example of the kind of service you get when you go with Gold Limo. We did a show up in up in Mount Pleasant at uh, Soaring Eagle casino and uh the day so we came home on a sunday and a tire blew so we're in like alma michigan right and we're stuck in alma michigan we call roadside assistance roadside assistance comes out and the guy doesn't know how to change the tire. how you roadside assistance you don't know how to change the tire that doesn't make sense does it right didn't know how to change the tire so we're stuck he just left didn't come back we need to get home we, we can get the car towed, but how do we get home? Do you know Golden Limo came up to Alma, Michigan to get my family and bring us home? That is service on another level. Service that is second to none. Service that you get whether you're traveling in Ann Arbor or Metro Detroit or anywhere in the country. That's another thing that really stands out. Like if you're going someplace and you need transport and you're not going to be able to get a rental and drive around yourself, Golden Limo, one call one email about your travel they will book your travel from the time you leave the door of your house to wherever you go that means when you land at the airport go with wait when you uh need to go someplace uh once you once you uh are at where you are golden can take care of that too and then when you come back home golden's waiting for you to bring you back home just like they did for me on the uh the opener of the season and that is what you get when you go with golden limo at goldenlimo.com executive transport party buses you know team buses they have all that cover i think as a matter of fact i think the michigan parents are going to be using golden for one of the uh one of the games this year i think they're going to uh penn state on a golden limo bus so that that just tells you how they get down over a golden limo you can have the golden limo experience as well by going to goldenlimo.com all right fellas let's get back to it and talking about flip candidates and so receiver we know receiver is definitely a big one for the maize and blue um and there are guys that they're farther down the line with one of them is obvious they've kept the iron in the fire with jordan ship it goes without saying he picks north carolina but his quarterback who's one of his good friends uh his fellow receiver chad and goodwin who is one of his good friends right you, you keep your iron in that fire you maintain contact with the young man just see how you're doing maintain contact with his mom all that's going on. I'm not saying that he's showing or acting like he's going to flip. But the more J.J. McCarthy. Remember, guys, we talked about this as J.J. and the passing game. The more they look good, the more touchdowns that um, Roman racks up, the more they show that they're throwing the football more, you know, more frequently at this point in the season than they did last year the better it looks to a guy like that who a big deal for him was what these schools, especially North Carolina, was telling them about, hey, they in Michigan, they don't throw the football. They don't feature their receivers, right? Well, Roman is one of the nation's leaders in touchdowns right now. That resonates. So you keep doing that. You stay in contact, Bryce and Steve, and that's the kind of thing that 
who knows down the line, maybe you can shake that free, especially when you got a couple of teammates on his team. Yeah. A couple I, teammates I, on his team, I mean. Right. I'm just looking at the highlights right now, and I'm like, man, that quarterback that's thrown to him is pretty good. So I wonder if, you know, in college he would maybe like catching a football from that guy. Then that had to be Jane Davis, if anyone didn't pick that up. But, yeah, I mean, this was a no-brainer kind of keep recruiting kid. Um, I, I'll be honest, I haven't really been following Notre Dame. North Carolina season, so I don't know how well they're doing. But they I know one I know one thing. Michigan is throwing the ball more, which they said they would. They're getting these wideouts more involved, and you're seeing them spread it out. And I think that's another thing. It's not just the Roman show. You've seen Cornelius shoot last week. You saw Samaj Morgan, a freshman, make mm-hmm. a big touchdown catch. So mm-hmm. they're spreading the ball around. I think that's a key thing. And Jane Davis is not coming to Ann Arbor just to hand the ball off a hundred times, Hundred you know, and you, you think he's telling them that every day. I mean, shoot every huddle, every time they're in the huddle and they're every play. So he's got him. He's got Channing Goodwin who's getting the ball and he's having a sen- sensational senior season as well. And I, I just think this is a no brainer. And Sam, like you were saying, he fits that bigger molded type of wide out they're looking for. You know, they got a Marriott store, Who's kind of that small slot, shifty mm-hmm. wide out? You got Channing Goodwin, who's six foot one, maybe six foot two. And then you got Jordan Chip, who's around that size, but he plays bigger. And that's kind of the wide out they're looking for in this class that complement those two guys really nicely. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a name that we've mentioned before, Steve. And this is this is one that it's a you talk about no brainers, absolute no brainer. But you wanted to make sure that he wasn't just using you for a visit but nitro tuggle like they i mean the contact has definitely been maintained with nitro tuggle and you have you have is uh you have jojo you have jojo Edmond on the on the team as uh you know his his current teammate being another in there you know i'm starting to feel more like a visit ohio state weekend is is likely i didn't feel uh as confident in that when we first mentioned them, but you know, the more the weeks go on, the more Michigan kind of features their receivers. You saw Roman stats on the, on the, on the, uh, the screen there, the more I feel like, man, this could, this could happen with at least a visit for nitro tug. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I think they'll get a visit here. Uh, him and Edmund are very tight. It feels like they're a little bit tighter than like normal, like, you know, I mean, teammates are tight, but, you know, a lot of times the guy's committed somewhere and he's got a teammate that's good too. It doesn't always mean that much, but it feels like I, I know Nitro uh, big time reaction when Edmund flipped to Michigan uh, to the point where it was noteworthy in my opinion. And we knew that Michigan was really high on Tuggle to begin with. I mean, he's another guy I believe started as an 87 or an 88 and now he is either in the top 100 or just outside the top 100. I mean, he's a legit Cross the board four star prospect, uh, one who like his ascent up the rankings. I don't think he's quite as good, but his ascent up the rankings is kind of similar to what Xavier Worthy did uh, from that junior to senior year transition, you know. And so, uh, but another guy that yeah, if you have an in there and the kid's showing any interest, then yeah, you need to go. I don't care who he's committed to. He, yeah, he's committed to Georgia. We know what Georgia's doing. We know what Georgia is. But you know, if you can get him up on campus. It's a lot closer to home. Michigan is throwing the football, as you guys said, when you're talking about Jordan Ship. No reason for Michigan not to make a run here, right? Especially again, get a teammate up there. All he's got to do is get in the same car and go up and go with him. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, for whether it's an unofficial or official, you know, you can get on the same plane, I guess. But uh, for them, they could they could drive out there. So, I yeah, I do think Michigan will eventually get him up here for a visit. I mean, there's if you're Tuggle, I don't think there's really any reason not to at least. Give Michigan a look here, especially if you're that tight with your committed teammates. So, uh, but yeah, that would be, I got to say, I mean, maybe you guys are, I think of all the names we discussed, he or Ship are probably the two top players that they're still recruiting. I mean, Tuggle would be a massive addition. I mean, really the, you know, so, hey, and the type of guy, Michigan's going to win a lot of games this year. Sometimes these are the kind of recruitments that they can that a winning can get you back into it, right? So I mean, you know, you always never take your uh, iron out of the fire, as you mentioned earlier, Sam. You got to keep them in 
with guys like this that you're that high on. Yeah, and this dude, like, he, he's been responsive. Like, he's, like, really been talking. Not, not, not to the point where I'm about to decommit, but to the point where it's, like, you don't feel like you're spinning your wheels if you're Michigan. So uh, you feel better about the fact that he's back up in Indiana. Like, he was still at IMG. You know, you feel uh, worse about your chances to maybe make some shake here. But between how you're doing on the field, throwing the football, you got a quarterback coming in, right? So you, you're showing what you are now. You got a quarterback that can continue it. You got his teammate coming on, and now you got proximity. It's just a lot of things lining up to give you a shot. Now, Georgia, by it by no means is it a slouch, right? Like you, it's gonna take some take some work. But man, you get them on campus, especially with that atmosphere, it's gonna be like for the Ohio State game. You got a puncher's chance there. A name that I haven't seen anywhere, but that would be in keeping with the theme that we've talked about when it comes to adding size to the class of kid and, and, you know, kind of picking over the carcass of a team that's flailing like Michigan state, Virginia tech, Virginia tech is another one that's really, really struggling. I mean, Virginia tech lost to Purdue went down and took it to, to Virginia tech in their house, man. I mean, and Purdue, I like Ryan Walters as a coach, but that, I mean, they had no business. If you're Virginia tech of old having Purdue come in there and beat them. So that team is circling the drain. You got to believe that the commitments to that class are feeling a little uneasy. A guy that I know there's been contact with is a bigger receiver named Chance Wiggins. Remember the name Chance Wiggins, a bigger like 6'3", you know, 190 pound, 195 pound guy, Uh, a guy who kind of flew is still flying beneath the radar a little bit. I know he had a Penn State offer. Um, you know, I think if Michigan decides to jump in with an offer, and this is something to watch, I think that one could move forward really, really fast if they decide to offer. So that's one thing to wait on. And then, Steve, a guy who they've already offered that I haven't heard that anything is really shaking with right now, but in keeping with the theme of, hey, if a team is struggling, you just kick the tires. Man, don't you think it makes sense if you're Michigan? to just kind of keep the feelers out there or put some feelers out there with Keelan Adams, that'd be another big time one if they could shake something free with him. Yeah, Adams specifically would enter that same conversation of Nitro Tuggle and Jordan Ship, I feel like. And, and, and yeah, also, I mean, and I know you know Michigan's not the only school probably just going up and down Virginia Tech's commitment list, like trying to find guys that you might be interested in, right? I mean, just – very disappointing sort of descent from that program since Frank Beamer, you know, departed town. I mean, a, a very talent or tradition rich program. So, you know, and they've recruited pretty well too. That's the thing to remember. Um, you're not looking at some so-so prospects here. I mean, they've, they've got some pretty talented commitments in this class. Adams is the highest ranked guy they had. And yeah, Michigan did offer, but that was never a name at that point. We didn't really hear, a ton. I want to say he chose Virginia Tech over, I think, Penn State, who is a big presence in Virginia. I mean, they're, they've always done a pretty good job recruiting that state. But, but yeah, he would immediately enter the fold as like one of those top two or three guys that they're recruiting at the receiver position. So definitely, and yeah, like you said, Sam, not sure if Michigan even has or, you know, if they, but I, this is a guy I absolutely would. Uh, there's no reason not to at least make a phone call or shoot a DM or shoot a text to just see where things are at there because, yeah, I mean, Virginia Tech, I mean, they might only win one or two games this year at the rate. They're, I mean, we're in conference season now. Uh, they're really, really struggling across the board. So, uh, yeah, both Adams and Wiggins. Wiggins fits more of the physical mode we've described. Mm-hmm. You know, is that six three six four type guy that Michigan – maybe wants to add, but Adams is that too talented to not at least maybe make an inquiry and see where things go. Uh, a couple of more guys, and we'll get away from, from receivers here uh, in, a, in in this uh, conversation, but three guys I want you, you two to talk about that are potential flip candidates uh, as well. Let's talk Dorian Williams. Let's talk James Madison. And let's talk Mike Mackay Boyro. Is that how you say his name? Boy Roo? How do you say his name? I, I just know so. the man is like 390 pounds. He's huge. He's huge. <laughs> let's 
let's he's start a with him. He's let's a mountain. Start with Ty Boyru. Yeah, he's from the state of Georgia. And he originally actually was committed to Florida. He recently decommitted, but that's a guy that Michigan has been working on for quite some time. He's like Sam, you pointed out, he's six foot five, 390. He's just a massive human being. And he's kind of that nose tackle, that space eater, commands double team sort of prospect Michigan's looking for. I mean, David Polly Polly, you know, got him. You missed on him. Justin Scott, you missed on him. You're still looking for those big space eaters, and he fits the bill to a T. Now, here's the caveat. Of course, Georgia is the one school that looks like kind of he's leaning towards. He's kind of favoring right now. But, uh, you know, I was told if it's not Georgia, looks like it might be Michigan. So we'll see. I know he's thinking about maybe taking an official visit in October. We'll see if that happens. If that does happen, then I could we could see some more interest, more things pick up there. I know Mike Elston, the defensive line coach, has done a really good job. They've been in contact with two parties. And, this, again, he's a guy that fits kind of what they're looking for. You know, they, they, they need a nose tackle. And he would be, I mean, more than ideal. I mean, what's crazy to imagine, too, he's bigger than Kenneth Grant, which I, I didn't think would be bigger than Kenneth Grant, but, you know. Crazy. Then there's crazy, him. crazy. Crazy, <laughs> and but that's the I main Kenneth Grant. Think about how big Kenneth Grant was, and they were able to get him in shape. And now the dude's an every down player, which is mm-hmm. I, I didn't see that coming at this point. Um, Steve, how about Dorian Williams? Yep, so Williams, yeah, a name to probably I'd say like put in the back pocket, just decommitted from Vanderbilt, I think a week or so ago, maybe a little more than a week or so ago. A name I think Michigan is definitely keeping an eye on. Uh, we know he's uh, out of Cincinnati, Ohio. I believe it's with Rowe High School. Um, Michigan – or Princeton, sorry, which is where I believe Princeton is um, – who's the kid they signed? The Ishmael. Breon Ishmael, mm-hmm. I believe, is Princeton yeah. High School from last cycle. Yeah. So, you know, when we know Michigan has recruited Cincinnati pretty hard, I think Steve Klinkscale, Klinkscale has a lot of experience in Cincinnati. So, yeah, 6'2", 200 pounds. Vandy's quietly another school I feel like Michigan, some other schools kind of keep an eye on their evaluations. I think Vandy, while being it, it being tough sledding for them year in and year out in the SEC, I, I do think the new staff under Clark Lee does a pretty good job in their evaluations. So, uh, you know, I, I think he might be a name to keep an eye on. And then the other kid we were going to talk about is James Madison, right? So Madison, if I remember right, Bryce, maybe you talked to him. I believe his mom goes to Michigan or went to Michigan. I think he's a le- I think yeah. he's a legacy. He um, might be. And cuz we were I think I remember joking that if if they were to get the kid they have George Washington on the basketball team and they have James Madison on the football team. Uh but another kid who our uh, national analyst Andrew Ivans noted was is having a very big senior season for St. Thomas Aquinas down in Fort Lauderdale, another program that pretty much every program recruits St. Thomas Aquinas. Not a kid, a kid like that's not going to go under the radar. He committed to Missouri a couple months ago, but is another kid that Michigan is at least keeping tabs on. And, and I believe there may have been some contact there. I would not put him at the level of some of the names we talked about earlier, but there's no guarantee some of the names earlier are going to end up in Michigan's class. So another name committed elsewhere that uh, I would potentially keep an eye on if if you know, maybe they don't move the needle with Jordan Ship or they, they can't get Nitro Tuggle up, uh, could be another name to watch. All right, so we are going to be keeping an eye on all those prospects, getting updates on some of those prospects, going to see some of those prospects in the coming weeks as well. Also, we're going to have uh, the commitments on. We're going to be having commitments on pretty frequently and giving you, the fans, an opportunity to interact with them. That's going to be another feature here on the Michigan Recruiting Insider. Another thing we're going to do, is we're going to dedicate, as I said at the beginning, we're going to dedicate some episodes regularly to NIL. I mean, what's the latest in NIL? What's the latest in NIL at Michigan, right? What's the NIL factor with certain prospects? We're certainly going to be spending. Of course, we're going to spend time on Bryce Underwood. Of course, we're going to spend time on Bryce Underwood, right? We're going to have entire episodes about Bryce Underwood, I promise you. Because I always get, man, it's like people can't get enough. They can't get a I have Bryce Underwood update every day. I mean, just say something. Just tell me what, what Bryce ate for dinner tonight. 
don't know, man. <laughs> right. We're going to have some Bryce Underwood updates. So maybe we could even get him on. We'll see if we can work that out. Uh, in the meantime, in between time, you can always check us out over on the MichiganInsider.com. That's where it all pops. That's where the crew uh, gives the regular updates. We have an outstanding uh, weekly coverage crew when it comes to team coverage, recruiting coverage, analysis and breakdowns. We run the gamut. So you can check us out over on the MichiganInsider.com. Pennies a day get you up to speed on everything that's going on. And we're, we're real news, by the way. We don't no fluff, no made up stuff. We give you real hard hitting factual stuff over at the MichiganInsider.com. Of course, if you like this podcast, be sure to rate it, be sure to review it, be sure to tell all your friends about it. That way they can get the, the podcast wherever they find their podcast, right? And then, of course, if you like the video, you can like the channel, you can subscribe to the video or subscribe to the channel, like the video. That'll keep you up to speed on that as well. And last but not least, our great sponsor, Go Limo. Again, whether you're taking the airport transport, you're making your way to the big house, you're traveling abroad, always ride on gold. You're riding in luxury, you're riding in excellence, and you're riding with someone you can trust as well when it comes to Go Limo, golimo.com. That's going to do it for us on another edition of the Michigan Recruiting Insider.